Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you that we are here tonight. We are privileged, Father, to be in your presence. Father, we just welcome you. We welcome the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you, Lord, to cover us, cover our families, cover our loved ones, cover this nation, Father, with your glory and your love. Father, we ask you tonight that you take us higher. Father, take us with you, Lord. Grow us, Father. Even though it's painful, we ask you to grow us. Lord, give us the ears to hear, spiritual ears to hear, spiritual eyes to see to what you are saying to us, Lord. Father, I ask you to anoint uh, Pastor Christine, Father, with your fire, a new fire, a fresh fire, O oh, Father, to speak your word. And we thank you, Father, for the word of God, for it never returns void. And we bless you, and we bless this meeting tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy New Year, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. For many of you, you are already into the New Year. For us, we are about to cross over, but we are all glad that... 2022 is behind us. Amen. It was a year where we uh, saw uh, bitterness. It was a year of warfare. I don't know about you even today. Let God, let me go through some warfare just to mark the end of the year. <laughs> so if you did not have a spiritual warfare this year like never before, please make an appointment because we need to make sure that you are a good Christian. <laughs> this year the warfare was intense. But thank God it's over. We are moving into Amen. 23 and I'm not allowing that kind of stuff to follow me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the title to the message today is Someone Knows His Time Is Short. Okay. Would you agree that someone knows his time is short? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So tell your neighbor Someone knows his time is short. Someone knows his time is short. Now, couple, this is not about your spouse. <laughs> it's not about somebody that you don't like. Okay. It's not about those people who persecute you. No, what we are talking here is from Revelation 12, That's right. verse 12, where it says, Woe to the earth and the sea. Because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Why was the warfare intense this year, this past year? If you look the things that have been going on in 2022, you will see that the devil was, is no longer hiding. His attacks were increased. In the olden days, the devil used to cover the night and come when it's dark and do his dirty work. But in 2022, the devil began to operate openly. It's like almost the devil committing suicide. Why? Because he knows that his time is short. Right. It's not because you are not praying and you are, you are not watching. In fact, if you are praying and watching, the warfare is more intense. 
That's the kind of thing go, oh, okay, if I pray and I fast and I do this, uh, there will be less warfare. Wrong. New levels, new devils. I'm going to take a time, show you a scripture that God kept giving me in 2022. He always took me back to Revelation chapter 12. And he told me, that's where you are right now. So we're going to go through that. And then we're going to talk about this coming year. Yes. And we are going, the Lord is going to help us to see how we're going to make it really powerful. I tell you, the devil is about to pay back. God will see to it. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 will go verse by verse. Hallelujah. Lord, speak to us. We need you. We need to hear your voice. We need your comfort. We need the answers, God. Hallelujah. There are things that you have gone through in 2022. And you went, you cried, you said, Lord, are you still with me? There are things that happened to you. And you said, Lord, are you sure? I never traveled this way before. Are you sure this is it? Are you sure this is you? And he did not even talk back to you. He, it seems like he ignored you. But can God ignore you? Well, you remember the woman who came asking, can you hear my daughter who is fully demon possessed? Jesus did not say a word two, three times. Jesus ignored her. There are times God doesn't talk to you because he is growing your faith. Amen. There are times a child cries, especially after the firstborn. Mm. The firstborn cries and you go quickly, you change the diaper. Huh. Okay, honey, what, what else can you do? Can you make sure that this baby is okay? And so both for father, both for mother, they come, they pump up the kid. <laughs> and when the kid sees you pampering, he cries more <laughs> to get your attention. And then, down in the road, you gain understanding and you gain wisdom. And you say, you know what, when they cry, we're going to stay quiet. We're not going to respond. And it, during that time, the child learned the language of the parents. That's right. And during that time, the child grows. So in 2022, there are many people you prayed and all you got from God was silence. So silence is of God. We read in the book of Revelation that there was a silence in heaven. It's not because there were now women there. They were sleeping. No. God, sometimes, he doesn't say a word. So, in verse 2, in verse 1, hallelujah, I'm going to need a good reader who will to sit very close to here with a microphone. Revelation 12, we see many characters in this chapter and some of the characters the way they are dressed it's like they have gone to the mall and they got dressed this way and that way so let's begin verse 1 now a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of 12 stars and she was with a child, and she cried out, being in a labor and in a pain to give birth. Hallelujah. You see this beautiful woman? 
You see the way she's dressed? Is there any way for her beauty which comes from heaven? God allows her to cry out, to be in a labor, to be in a pain. It's a part of the journey to be in a labor, to be in a pain. Do not seek a kind of Christianity where everything is good. There is a reason why you are crying. There is a reason why you're going through the pain. It's all going to pay. It's like when you walk out, they say, without pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. That's it. Say it. No pain, no gain. Absolutely, it's from God. But there are pains that we should not be going through. And we're going to also talk about that. Let's read verse 3 and 4. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is the one who is against us, the proud one. Look at the way he's dressed in a red, seven heads. The devil has many different ways to deceive. Ten horns. There is a power. He does also have a power. So the devil. Uh, deceives in verse 4 we see the false warfare he deceives a third of the stars a third of the angels he threw them to the earth when you listen to the devil and you do what he tells you to do and you fall in his scheme it's all about to throw you. There is nothing good the devil can give you. That's right. We used to have a friend who used to say, well, sometimes the devil tell you the truth. His truth makes away with the lies. It is still lies. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So the devil, as we see him here, he stands before the beautiful woman. And he is there just to devour. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. There is never a time when the devil comes just to be there. That's why when you see evil, that's why when you see the devil, you've got to do something about it. You cannot hang out with the devil. Nor can you say, well, he's not disturbing me. I'm going to let him live in next door or in my house. <laughs> no, whenever you see the devil, you don't wait for him to attack you. Amen. Hallelujah. You get it over with. Because this devil standing by the woman, he is only there to devour the child. Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. You see, in spite the warfare, in spite the big devil that was against the woman, she gives a birth. She gave birth to a healthy baby. A married child who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. It's not because he's a dictator, but it talks about authority. There's a time coming when God is going one more time to rule the world. Hallelujah. And 
in spite of the attack against this baby, the child is caught up to God. In spite of the warfare, God will bring you to a safe place. So therefore, there is no need to lose the heart when you are going through warfare. There is no need to worry when you are going through warfare because you are going through. God is going to bring you to the other side. There is no reason to give up when he tells you we're going to make it to the other side. Verse 6. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared for, by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. When you read Revelation uh, chapter 11, you see that there is a persecution coming against the woman, against the people of God. And this persecution is going to last for three and a half years. So, in Revelation 11, 2, in Revelation 13, verse 5, the persecution is for three and a half years. Meaning that God prepared a place of safety for him corresponding to the time of persecution. So there is nothing that happens by accident. When you are going through a hard time, God has a way of escape. When there is a tough time ahead of you, God knows ahead of time and there is a backup plan. I will read verse 7. And there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels, waging war with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels waged war. We see another warfare, like the two warfare before, where the devil come against the woman, when the devil come against the child, again, we see that in this warfare, God is going to win. When warfare is going on, when trouble are happening, in the middle of it, we are short-sighted. We think, oh my goodness, is this going to be over? But it will be over. And when you read the character of God, he's still, he's going to win. And so the warfare is real. Do not think that the devil does not plan. Every single day, the devil sit down. The demons sit around and they have a meeting against us. They come against us. And so it's also good that every single day we sit down and we plan. We make up our mind that we're going to stand upon the word of God. We are not going to travel that way. Hallelujah. Yeah. And sometimes when you're going to warfare, that's why it's very important to have a body of Christ. Because is it one devil coming against you? It's many. So to fight against them, you need the body of Christ. It's not just one devil. They all gather together and they come against us. And to defeat them, you need the body. Amen? Amen. Verse 8. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. You see heaven, there is warfare. The devil launch an attack against heaven and heaven overcomes them heaven wins there is no room whatsoever anymore found for the devil and do not think that this is something that has to happen only to heaven 
Everyone who is living on the earth. The devil is going to come against you. And God wants you to overcome and to win. That's why when Jesus visit the churches, he said, he who overcomes. He who overcomes. God does not take pride in you when you say, well, I, I, I did not win that warfare. Today, you, you let the devil win. Tomorrow, you let the devil win. What kind of Christian are you? So we need to have the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to win the devil in the flesh. You need the power of God. Amen. So there was no longer a place found for the devil in heaven. There should be no room for the devil in your marriage. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. No room for the devil in our family. No room for the devil in our nation. But first of all, no room for the devil in me. It starts with me. It doesn't start with my spouse. It doesn't start with my children. It starts with me. When the parents get freedom, when the parents get deliverance, it's going to come down. It's going to come down. Amen? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Did you hear that word? Cast out. Thrown out. The devil is meant to be thrown out. Yes. He is, if I can say that, maybe it's not the right way to say it, but this is what I feel. He is created to be thrown out. Yeah. You know, like when you see kids come in and they see a uh, soccer ball, kick. <laughs> Hallelujah. If the devil make a mistake, he comes to my house, kick. He is to be thrown out. Yeah. He is not supposed to be welcomed. He is not supposed to be hanging out with us. We are not supposed to talk with the devil back and forth. No. The only talk I bind you, I cast you out in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we are now going to be part of this work culture where you tolerate. The devil is not to be tolerated. Well, you know, Pastor, I want to have a peace. You can have a peace when the devil is seated at the table with you. Oh. Amen. Amen. So he is to be thrown out. God is speaking to the men. Men are supposed to protect their homes. Amen. Men are supposed to cast out the demons. By the way, there's something about a male figure. We have done the deliverances where I have a team of women, we get it done. But when there is a man, a man is created with the authority. The demons don't even argue. The men speak, they start going like. Yeah. Unfortunately, the men these days we have to pray. God is gonna restore, He promised He's gonna restore the hearts of the Father. Yeah. But many men are lukewarm. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we pray yes, Lord. that you restore the men. Yes. The lukewarmness is God in the name of Jesus. Amen. God wants to restore. Then man to Adam is the first position when he created the human, he said, rule over. Lord, we pray, restore the man. Let men study and know about warfare. Let men be men of prayer. I tell you what, you want the power of God, you want to cast out demons, it all starts with prayer. Blessing God, if I church, I never wanted to cast out demons. 
I never wanted to. I just wanted to have a powerful ministry. I wanted to do well, to travel, to be on the TV, <laughs> to have a revival. But I love the prayer. And by praying a lot, one day, Chantal is my witness, in the month of September 2008 or nine, one of those years, we are, I think it's 2009, we are in a Wednesday service. We've been praying. We've been praying. Back then, we did not pray every day. We used to pray Wednesday. We used to pray Thursday. And then Saturdays. As we were finishing the prayer, we say, okay, let's give the fire. Let's do a fire tunnel. We hold the hands and we ask people to go under the fire tunnel. When people were going through, one woman who was a satanist, but we didn't know, she could not move. That's how we start cursing out demons. The demons will react when the power of God is. When you pray every morning, you pray every evening, and you're faithful doing it, and you do it from the heart, you just wait a little while longer. Demons are going to start trembling and shaking. Let's read 10 and 11. Then I heard, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, his Christ have come for the accuser of our, our brethren who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. This is the scripture that we want to memorize Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him. You want to overcome him. And there are three things that you need to do to overcome him. Number one, by the blood of the Lamb. What this means, you've got to be saved. You've got to accept Jesus as your Savior. He shared the blood. He gave it to everyone who is willing. So you've got to have him say yes to Jesus. Number two, the word of their testimony, we're going to really get deep into this. Because there are many things we destroy with the wrong words. And the number three is the greater love. Greater love. Those are the things that help you to overcome the devil. Now, notice that in verse 9, the devil was thrown down to the earth. Today when I was praying, I said, God, I wish you had thrown him out somewhere else. <laughs> Can you imagine our world without the devil? And then I said, Lord, he's been thrown to the earth. Now what's next? Where can we throw him at? Where can we throw him at? I don't want him to stay here. You can send him to Afghanistan. No, 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 no. We love Afghanistan. Oh, okay. We're going to throw him back to the pit <laughs> of hell. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, notice that an angel with a loud voice say, Now salvation and power in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. In order for you to walk in this, the devil had to be thrown out. The devil had to be thrown out, and only then will you see, will you see salvation in your home. The devil had to be thrown out, and only then will you see the power of God. The devil had to be thrown out, and only then will you see the kingdom of our God. There are many people who want the power of God, but then they want the drink. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. 
yes, oh yes. There, there are prayer groups. People come every day to prayer. And we tell them, hey, you, you are not doing well and you are drinking. Well, I, I really think it's okay. It's okay. Well, you're dancing with the devil. And then you, you will be oppressed. In order to see these things, the power, the authority coming, the devil has to be thrown out. Hallelujah. I pray that we become good at kicking out the devil. I pray that we be really good. A casting out demons. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He has been thrown out. So the Lord allows it that he be thrown out where we live. Because everyone must overcome the devil. The mother has to overcome the devil. The child on their own has to overcome the devil. It's a test for everybody. The spouse has to overcome together. But each one of us, the husband has to overcome the devil on his own. I know we love them and many times... We are trying to help them overcome the devil. And that's good in the beginning. But we need to teach them how they can overcome on their own. I want to spend a little time here because the Lord said it's very important that we talk about this. They overcame him, number one, by the blood of the Lamb. Help me. Number two, by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. What does this mean? Oh, the Lord taught me today, and I'm going to share with you. The word that comes out of your mouth is very important. It's been proven in a science that when you say we are sick, every cell within you, they say, what? We are sick? So they start getting ready. They started getting ready to be sick. When you say we are winning, hallelujah, and you put a shout day, the demons that have been assigned to you, they say, did you hear about that? They are winning. They are winning. <laughs> we better get here before we are cast out. Because when you cast them out, did you know that when you bind them, you cast them out? When they go to hell, do you know what happens? The devil torment them really bad because they lost the battle. You can ask the whole church when the Lord opened our eyes and we did deliverance and the demons are losing you. The, the people here, Clarice, Chantal, Sylvia, myself, we hear them saying, oh no, oh no, the valley, you are sending us back and they're, oh no, we are not going. So, before the demons are cast out, it's a, they, they say we die here in this body. Because when they get to here, they get tormented really bad by the devil. And the devil whip them and he say, you lost the battle. So the devil basically send his army, even though they are not strong enough to win against Christians. So when you say we win this battle, the demons begin to gather and they tremble and shake. So our word is very, very important. Let me take you to the book of Matthew chapter 8. There is a centurion who has a servant who is sick. He sent for Jesus and he said, Jesus, please come and help me. Jesus comes. And the centurion here, Jesus is on the way. Jesus said, I will come and hear him. I will come. When, when, when the centurion heard about that, he said, Lord, I'm not worthy. 
it's like having the king of all kings coming to my house. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy. I also, I am a man under authority. I am in the army. I am submitted to my boss. And I have people under me. I understand about authority so well. The one who is a Below me, when I tell them, do this, they do it. When I say, go, they go. When I say, come, they come. He was basically saying, I know that you're so powerful. You, I'm not worthy for you to come. You just say a word, and my servant will be healed. The Bible tells us that Jesus exclaimed, and he said, whoa. Such a faith I never seen anywhere in Israel. And because of that answer, your servant is healed. Let's break it down here. The servant is healed, but Jesus did not go there. Jesus did not go lay hands on it. The servant. What here is him? It's the faith in the centurion. But the faith is not manifesting the fruit until he does what? Until he confess. That's right. Until he says something. The healing takes place after he spoke the words of power. So God wants you to know that you have a power here. Amen. The Lord has told us that the strongest weapon that we have is our voice. That's right. But today we see evil and we say, oh no, oh no. I don't want to offend them. Oh no, 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 no. I don't want to offend them. Let me tell you that there is a woman who rebuked me one time when I was newly saved. I got saved, and it was really hard, but I, I said, okay, I'm giving up drinking. <laughs> so I gave up drinking. But even after I gave up drinking, whenever I went to the party back home, you know, beer is everywhere. I would be telling people, oh, here, you can have some. I, I am donating beer. I am almost like recruiting myself to distribute beer, even though I don't drink beer. So there was a born again Christian mama seated next to me. She said, let me ask you a question. I said, yeah. Why are you not drinking beer? I said, I'm a born again Christian. So you're not drinking because you know it's wrong. I said, yes. He said, she said, well, because you know it's wrong, you should not push people to do what's wrong. That was the end of it. Ever since then, I do not offer people beer. I do not say, well, you know what? Just drink. Because she was strong enough to rebuke me. How many people are bound because you have not said a thing? How many people in agony because you say, well, I can't say anything? If you want the truth, People will not be free. But if you speak the truth, they'll be free. So we need to speak the truth, but you need to know there is a price to pay. When you speak the truth, you will create many enemies. They will hate you. They will seek to harm you. But so what? Shall we let people go to hell? No, we are going to choose. To speak the truth in love, whether they like us or not. Yeah. So, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. In Matthew chapter 15, there is a woman who comes to Jesus. Jesus ignores him, even though she was saying, Lord, please come. And here, 
my daughter. The woman that did not give her. And Jesus said, it's not okay to take the bread and give it to the dogs. The woman responded back. She doesn't give up. She said, Master, even the dogs can lick the crumbs that falls underneath the table. The Lord responded to her and said, because of this answer, go. Your child is wed. Why? What cured that daughter? Was it medication? Was it Jesus coming and laying the hands? Say, because of your word, because of your answer. Amen. Your answer will terrify the devil or they will invite the devil. Did you know that God wants you to come and reason with him? Did you know that you can formulate your word so well that the Lord is a moving. There are times I preach and the guy helps me and God move, is moved by the words I preach. You have the power to move God with your words. Hallelujah. You can sit with God and reason with him and tell him about Father. He loves that. That's right. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to be good at speaking the words of life. Amen. Help us to be good, even convincing you. Amen. You can do it. You can change the mind of God. Hallelujah. You can move God with your words. So your words are very, very, very powerful. If you show fear, if you show worry and you say it out of your mouth, it's going to invite the enemy. There are people who have said the devil doesn't know what's in us or who we are until we speak. So speak in a such a way that the devil will run away and not come closer to you. Amen? Amen. The third thing they used to overcome the devil was greater love. Greater love has none than this. The one laid down his life for his friend. You see here, they did not love their lives even when faced with death. Hallelujah. But we are afraid, oh, if I say they will come against me. Even if they say we will kill you, we need to say it because God will protect us. If it's a word from God, say it. God will protect you. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. All that you have been seeing in 2022, it shows that the devil knows that his time is short. Do you know what they are doing to our kids in the public school? Little kids, they are grooming them to become homosexual. They are Grooming them to be addicted to this type of lifestyle. They are openly, openly, and they are very good finding the laws to protect their evil doing. Yes. It used to be that the devil can do such things, but in the hiding. We are in the days where the devil is doing this openly. So the devil know that his time is short. The devil know what time it is. But the people of God, they do not know. There are many people right now in the bars, every 
everywhere all over the world and I could have been one of them if it was not the grace of God they are there they are on the way to hear it but they do not know and the devil knows the devil knows that his time is very very short so it's a time that we also wake up and know the time it is. His time is very short. We should not spend so much time worried about, oh no, I don't have rent. I don't have this, I don't have that. Oh no, oh no. We should focus. This is going to be over because the one who oppresses us is about to be dumped forever into the pit of hell. We are almost done. We are almost done here. But I want to tell you, Revelation 12, no matter what the enemy tried to do against the woman, you don't find anywhere where the Lord said, well, you're going to deal with it yourself. The Lord always came, provided help, Amen. provided the angels, yes, provided Lord. the food, provided the roof over her head. The Lord was always and is always with her. The Lord will be and is always with us. Amen. So I am closing that chapter, but we're going to close by talking about 2023 because that's where we are going hallelujah. we are going to make this coming year great hallelujah, hallelujah. let's make it great again amen, amen. we are going to speak the words of life amen. we are going to love we are going to overcome the devil. He's going to be beaten left and right. Amen. We know that his time is short. Hallelujah. And we know that he's the loser. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the winner man. And we are winning with him. Amen. 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 So as we spoke yesterday, the year uh, 2000, uh, 20, uh, the year 2022 is going to be a year of justice. Yes. 2023. I'm sorry, 2023. Amen. It's going to be a year of justice. The Lord is slow to anger. There are people who do things all over the world. They trample upon the righteous and they think, okay, right now we are the big kings. We can do this. We're going to trample upon people. But justice is coming in 23. Amen. Justice is coming to Africa. Amen. Justice is coming to Europe. Justice is coming to America. Justice is coming all over the world. Can you imagine, for example, that in Uganda, the president has been there for 30, how many, 32 or 36 years? 37. Oh my goodness. 37 years and I am the president. I was born with a seed to rule over you and you must accept me to be your king. God says justice is coming to Uganda. Yeah. It's going to come. Justice is coming to Rwanda. There is no way that Rwanda is going to escape God's justice for the year 23. God is about to speak up for the oppressed. He's going to speak up for the afflicted. He's coming to speak up for the widow. He's going to speak up for the orphans. He's going to speak up for the people 
that have been looked at as a carpet by which the mighty should trample upon. If you look from a Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, you will see that God has been always a God of justice. But he takes his time. He is slow to anger. He is slow to revenge. But he's about to do it. And when he does it, everyone will see. God is not going to do it. In the closet, the whole world will see. God is coming to vindicate for you. When you talk about justice, you're talking about a judge. When you talk about justice, you're talking about judgment. Yes, we're going to say judgment in the 23. The Lord is showing me that for so long there is what on the earth I can call like a fake justice. Where you use the law to oppress, for example, the babies. When you use the law to support injustice, when you use injustice to rule over the weak, the time is coming to an end. God is coming to judge the fake rulers. God is coming to judge the dictators. The Lord is showing me first king and second kings, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow. The situation of Adonai, the king who installed himself and crowned himself king. But we see that in the second king, God came and judged him. He ended up being killed. And the people who allied themselves with the king who got the power by deceit, even the people who work for him, who followed him, they got judged, they got killed. Stand up. We're going to pray and we're going to ask God of justice to come and rule of our nations. God is coming to expose the fake justice, he will remove it, hallelujah. There's a justice that is coming, it's going to be at all levels. God is going to see to it that justice even begin in your own home. So this causes us to really live in fear and trembling and remain repentant. Thank you. Justice is coming at your workplace. You, Justice is coming at your school. Justice is coming in a relationship in the kingdoms, in nations. The people who love God, the people who know him, they will draw closer 
Because when we hear about a judge, we have the fear and trembling before God. But the wicked will even act more wickedly. So do not be surprised when you see even more injustice happening in the early of 23. It's because there are some who need to fill up the cups of judgment. Lord, we pray for justice to visit USA. Oh, the courts, the court rooms, yes. a place where people are supposed to receive justice, but it has been the opposite. God is going to visit the Supreme Courts of the state and of the nations. God will restore the righteous ruler in the same way God restored Solomon to rule over the children of Israel and God kicked out Adonai. God will restore the real judge and the real ruler. We must pray with verse sing when God tells us this year is going to be the year of justice. It means the Lord has given you the prayer request. Let's lift up our hands. I want to pray for us. The Lord is even going to bring justice. He's going to visit your prayer closet that I time he prayed. And the Lord blessed you, but the enemy came and destroyed it. God is going to bring justice. He's going to visit those cases. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's going to be well with the righteous. It's going to be well with the afflicted. It's going to be well with those who were oppressed by mighty ruler. But it's not going to be well for those who are proud in the heart. Father, I pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray, saints. Let's pray. Father, I pray that we remain in the place of humility. And I pray that we remain in the place of repentance yes. where we choose uh, to put on the garment of righteousness. Yes. Yes. The Lord is telling you to not revenge for yourself. Right. The righteous judge is coming to venge for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will vindicate you. He will remember your prayer. He will visit us with justice. Justice is going to visit every home, every institution, every nation, every continent. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Amen.